thing out of thin air. And I mean it quite literally. You know how you were taught that a vacuum is nothing but empty space? Well, that isn't exactly true, at least in the world of quantum mechanics. If you dive deeper, below the level of molecules, atoms, electrons, and protons, and into the world of the tiniest subatomic particles like quarks, you'll see that even the vacuum of space can never be truly empty. It's filled with particles that randomly pop in and out of existence. But the exciting thing about these fluctuating particles is that they generate energy that we could hypothetically put to good use. How could we harness this vacuum energy? How would taming a source of unlimited power change us? And why could this be dangerous for the planet? This is what if, and here's what would happen if we harnessed zero point energy. Don't be spooked by its complex name. Zero point energy is simply the vacuum energy we just talked about. And according to calculations in quantum field theory, the vacuum of space holds an infinite amount of it. If we could find a way to use it, just a cup full of this energy might hold enough power to boil all the Earth's oceans. So, where would we start? In quantum mechanics, things behave differently from how they would in classical physics. For example, you can't know where a particle is until you observe it. What's more, the more accurately you determine the position of the particle, the less accurately you can determine its momentum. It's called the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle, and it applies to particle duration and energy as well. Are you still with me? Good, because we're just getting to the cool part. What this uncertainty principle tells us is that zero-point energy exists. We just need to find a way to collect it. How would we do that? The vacuum of space is really cold, right? But it's not the absolute zero kind of cold, more like 2.7 Kelvin. To transfer zero-point energy, you'd simply need a colder source to receive that energy. The problem is, it's not possible as far as our technology goes. We can't pull the energy out of nowhere unless we could reduce the vacuum energy in a region of space first. According to the second law of thermodynamics, the vacuum would try to fill in the gap. And that's where we could interfere and collect the zero-point energy. But this method wouldn't be that effective because we'd spend more energy trying to extract the zero-point energy. I know, it seems like a dead end, but let's do what we usually do in a case when the existing technology hasn't caught up yet. Let's fast forward into the future where all the extraction issues are resolved and where everything is powered by zero-point energy. Now what? Unlimited energy would mean free or almost free energy. We'd have free public transportation and we would all drive electric cars. Everyone, including developing countries, would have access to cutting-edge technology and to the internet. Non-renewable energy sources would be a thing of the past. Even the renewable sources we use today would be obsolete. Why would we need solar energy farms if we could automate the extraction of unlimited zero-point energy and never need to worry about power again? But as with all things we have in excess, we could start overusing the energy too. The planet might be free of emissions from fossil fuels, but it doesn't mean that there would be no new threats from energy consumption. We'd need our governments to regulate how we use all that energy. Maybe it would be a good idea to focus on exploring space. Powered by the infinite amounts of zero-point energy, we'd be able to go across the solar system in a matter of hours. We could start mining asteroids and terraforming other planets. And maybe one day, we decide to relocate humanity altogether. But that's a story for another What If.
brothers and sisters of the celestial energies, brother wisdom. How you guys doing? Um, okay. I hope you guys uh, understood the the beginning of this message here, which is talking about zero point energy. And you know, like they say, zero point energy is a vacuum. But what we want to understand is that before the invasion of our planet. We, the original beings of this world, we were already tapped into zero point energy. And let's like explain what zero point energy is. We're going to go into integers. A lot of you know what integers are. When you're dealing with integers, like saying, for instance, um, uh, negative three plus negative three is going to give you negative three. Positive three plus positive three. I mean, a negative three plus negative three is gonna give you negative six, I'm sorry. Positive three plus positive three is gonna give you positive six. Let's just say you have negative three plus positive three. That's gonna zero out, and that's your zero point. So when we're talking about zero point energy, we're talking about real, raw science. Let's just say for instance, let's just uh, say for instance the sun, our sun. Let's just say our sun has um, 30 million negative ions and 30 million positive ions. And those two uh, uh, different ion, ionic forces, the negative and the positive, because they're equal and one is not greater than the other one, one is not less than the other one. Um, they share the energy and as they share that energy between the two of them, they cancel each other out and that's a zero point energy. But all that energy that's being shared together is being felt on the outside. OK, so we're talking about powerful zero point energy. They said they talked about space and it being cold. No, it's not cold in space. It's, it's nowhere near cold in space. OK, when you go up there, it's extremely hot. Because you have like crazy ions up there just moving around, just constantly moving. Anytime you have constant move, movements of ions and, and atoms and protons and, you know, and electrons and all just moving, you have you have energy and it's a lot of it's a lot of energy up there. It's not cold. Um, anything, anytime something is cold, there will be no motions. It will be everything will be motionless, just like all of the planets are extremely hot. Our planet is hot, it's supposed to be hot year round. These beings are, you know, trying to manipulate the weather. All right, all right. So, zero point gravity. I mean, I'm sorry, not zero point gravity. Zero point energy is the most powerful energy ever, and our pyramids, the towers that we talked about, the temples and all that we built, they exerted zero point energy. So these tall towers, you know, we, we did everything. We did everything grand. We did everything big. And this is one thing that's been removed from us, the science. The towers that we created were some of, most of them were like a pyramid type form at the top and the energy was grounded all right with the planet and because of the size of the tower as the energy came up the the what we say protons and electrons and the negative atoms and the positive atoms as they came from the ground and to the mechanical uh, uh, energies of the atom, they began to multiply themselves. They multiplied themselves, but they were comp they were stay they stayed equal. All right, they stayed equal as they multiplied themselves, and then as that energy reached reached the top of the tower, it went into the atmosphere. The atmosphere is already zero point. So when you go high into the atmosphere, you get you got this powerful plasma energy. Plasma energy is zero point energy. So this energy went across the planet and we had towers, these towers and temples and these devices all over the planet because they benefited our bodies. OK, understand that our bodies are highly um, 
and radioactive. All right. We have polonium. We have uranium. We have plutonium. We have uh, cesium. We have cadmium. I mean, all all types of other um, radioactive elements that are in our bodies. And as this energy went up through the towers, went up through the pyramids, the pyramids also, because the pyramids were a source of energy on our planet, it entered our bodies, and our bodies, we in a, in, within our bodies, we could feel this powerful energy, and it was a beautiful feeling. And this is what gave us the ability to fly, to levitate, teleport, to you know do all these great things that we did you know you know make energy come from our bodies um you know sonic movements i mean you you name it all the things that we did what you see all on the movies you know the flash and spider-man and superman the flying you know us flying or whatever the nazgûs which is the dragon riders you know all the other creatures this was because of zero point energy Okay. Highly radioactive, highly magnetic, highly, highly electrical. Okay. Powerful energy that we used. And this is this is why it is so feared that we return back to that state but it's not their decision to stop us or let us go because they've already violated multiple 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 cosmic laws throughout their existence on our planet and that's going to be dealt with um the whole key in this is understanding that we must bring ourselves back to this state of being. All right. This is why we've been talking about using imagination. We talk about meditation. But also, we talked about building and creating something that we must embrace. As we watched this video, we saw that the inorganics want to harness the zero point energy and they're telling you that they want to harness it but it's not meant to be harnessed this zero point energy is meant to be used as a source of power it is the most powerful energy known across the cosmos and this is what gave us our abilities and our powers so in order for us to link back into that power again we must begin creating powerful structures as we did in the past that will render us powerful for our future. Okay. Um, there's a video that I posted on the YouTube uh, community channel. Um, talk about free energy, zero point energy. Something for you all to look at. Something for you all to gaze upon. You know, it's important that we take this matter to heart because we have to return to supreme power and nothing's going to come to us and we've got to build, we've got to create. All right. We know the inorganics want to harness this, but they can't harness it because it is something that belongs to the atmosphere belongs to the planet you cannot harness something so powerful you have to be a part of it you have to move with it you know we use the zero point energy that zero point energy uh as we linked into it it opened up the gateway for massive amounts of technology to come about within us and this is how we were able to do things on some crazy level. Just like I said, you know, we built the pyramids. Zero point energy. Telekinesis. You got to remember whether or what's on the outside of us affects what's on the inside of us. All right. And we knew that our, we knew about our bodies being cosmic bodies. So 
something for you all to think about. All right. But I'm going to leave you with this right here. OK, hold on one second. Hold on here. Hold on. Today we continue with uh, searching for free energy. And this time we again are speaking about zero point energy. The same energy we uh, I have been describing in the Thomas Hendrick ra radiant energy collector. Basically this big antenna which is able to, to pick up the cosmic waves, which should be also part of the uh, this zero point energy. Huh? And, if, uh, and this device does the very similar thing. And this is called the Thomas Traverger Pyramid Power. Now basically this small pyramid is I think one by one meters, one by one meter. And in the middle there is this machinery or this passive components which basically pick up this zero point energy. So this outside, this is the copper uh, pipes. Yeah? Inside of these uh, pipes yeah, there is uh, two graphite rods and some kind of quartz sand fillet. So, so this 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 portion of the pipe now selected, it's filled with quartz sand, and there is a salt water on the bottom. Yeah, and then we would just have uh, two plus and minus, and I will now describe how it's uh, how we are able to access this energy. Yeah, so basically that's it. Yeah, it looks like a chemical reaction. Yeah, and uh, and that it, that is a hoax, but. Uh, in theory, yeah, this should pick up the zero point energy. And if I go now to the only image we have, so basically, so this is the setup of the middle machinery, and it's connected to uh, this capacitor. I, this, this is in the middle. Uh, if I go back in the middle, this blue part is the 10 plate capacitor. And, uh, and this is the copper wire bounded, connected to one and the other side of this capacitor. And then the housing or this wire is connected to uh, and, and between between this capacitor, we are able to get output of energy, you know? and and these uh, bolts uh, are connected to the steel frame of the pyramid. And that's basically it. Yeah? So this small and simple system. Yeah? I will put down in the description below the videos from Thomas Traveger, which where he explained, I think, in in, <laughs> in several hours how this works. But basically that's it, so this small piece of machinery with the condenser, graphite uh, quartz sand and graphite rods all connected to uh, let's say grounding via this frame should be able to give us the free energy source forever. Yeah, so that's it, because it, it, it gives the access to the zero point energy, the energy which we can found which we can find in the vacuum space. Yeah. And this is the technological problem currently in physics because the it uh, defies the thermodynamics uh, formulas. Yeah. Because the, the in the vacuum there is a zero point energy which for which we are missing some constant. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. So I, I cannot say much more about this. It's very simple device to reconstruct if you watch the Thomas Traveler videos. But basically this is it. Yeah. So thank you for watching. Until next video, stay tuned on my channel. Bye bye. So as you see, um, zero point energy, the pyramid, something for you all to think about. All right. Zero point energy is how we were able to move. We talked about Star Wars with, you know, how George Lucas said he studied Atlantean technology with Atlantean technology, what we have zero point energy. All right. We had those tall towers, those tall pyramids, those tall structures that gave off powerful energy into the atmosphere. And this is something that we've got to start building again. All right. Don't worry about what your enemy thinks because they can no longer uh, violate any more cosmic laws. All right. Just want to pass that on to you guys. Um, hope you understand, overstand, understand this uh, message here. And uh, I'll catch you guys a little later. All right. Glad to be a part of this. Um, and we're going to we're going to get to, we're going to get this together. OK. And as usual, all power to the multi chakra celestial angelic beings. May chaos reign with you forever and ever. Much power to you all.